common habit when you focus on the body is to tense up at the spot where you're focused, which may help for a while, but it's going to cause problems in the long term. Blocks the flow of the blood, makes you uncomfortable, makes it hard to stay. So you've got to think in a new way. Instead of thinking that you're outside the area, boxing it in, you're inside the spot that you're going to be focused on, and you're radiating relaxation out in every direction. Try to hold that perception in mind, wherever you're focused. And if there are any little patterns of tension that may come up, just see if you can breathe through them. Think of the breath as a solvent that dissolves these things away. And then keep watch. See what kind of breathing helps with this kind of focus. Because breathing too heavily can be unpleasant. Breathing too lightly can make it hard to stay focused, especially in the beginning. You find that as your ability to stay focused with a sense of relaxation gets more skillful and that you're more used to it. Then you can stay there and the breath can get more and more subtle, more and more subtle, until it seems like it's not coming in or going out at all. That's perfectly fine. You're not going to die. The body will breathe as it needs to. The fact that the mind is doing a lot less work means you're using a lot less oxygen. So the need to breathe is a lot, is a lot less. And if you ask where you're going, you're not going anywhere, you're going to stay right here. You want to be in charge right here, be established right here. And then just try to notice if anything comes up that's going to dislodge you, that's going to pull you away. Once you feel really established here, then any movement of the mind that goes out in any direction, you're going to notice it. And if you're not yet well established, you'll probably go with it. But as you get more and more used to being here, centered in this feeling of relaxation, this feeling of openness, there will come a point when you realize you don't have to go with the mind as it runs out. You can see it run out for a little way, and then it stops, because you're not running with it. If you run with it, you can take it all the way around the world several times. But if you don't run with it, it goes out just a little tiny way and then it stops. It's like a flashlight beam that can go only so far. But if you're carrying the flashlight and you want to see the end of the beam, you go running after it, of course, that just keeps the beam going further and further and further away. But if you stay right here, it goes only so far and then it stops. And you begin to notice that as thoughts form, They form right at the spot where the mind and the body seem to meet. In fact, the original stirring is hard to say whether it's a mental stirring or a physical stirring. It's just a stirring right there in some place in your awareness, a little knot, a little swiggle. And you want to comb it out. It's like it's a knot in your hair. You comb it out with the breath and with your powers of perception. You may begin to notice that there's a word that's associated with that little knot or a little picture. And you can attack it either from the side of the breath or you can attack it from the side of being a picture or a word. Just scramble it. You've probably seen images on a TV where things are going fine. It looks like a person talking on the TV and all of a sudden everything gets scrambled. Well, try that with every image that comes up in the mind. Once you're well established. There's a sense of well-being inside, so you can step back from the movements of the mind and just watch them as processes. Instead of thinking about how you're going to gain some pleasure out of this or gain some pleasure out of that thought or that perception, you want to step back and say, well, these are just processes in the mind. They come and they go and they form and then they disband. And see what happens if you speed up the disbanding a little bit, scramble the, the image anywhere where you tend to notice there's an image that's coming up. Scramble it before it even turns into anything that you could recognize. And see what happens. 
Try not to lose your foundation here with the breath or with the sense of the body. And you begin to notice you have a greater sense of control over things going on in the mind. A thought for forms, and you don't have to be subjected to whatever the thought's going to be. You also find, though, that there are some thoughts that you tend to like to follow. Old video clips would be other things that actually happened, or things that you would like to have happened, or you want to happen in the future, or just things that you find entertaining. Things that the mind goes toward, either because of lust or greed or anger or whatever. And you find that when you try to scramble those images, part of the mind is going to resist. It wants to protect them, saying, don't touch these things. You can throw a lot of things out of the attic, but these things have to stay. And if you listen to that voice, you never get down to, well, why is it that you're so protective of that? Go ahead and scramble the image. This is one way of digging up unknown attachments, or some old known attachments, but finally decide you're going to take them on and see what the mind has to say. Anything that comes up, good, bad, indifferent, whatever, scramble it. Some of the forest giants would say, if you have an image of the body, think of having a knife that you cut through all the, all the tendons, all the connecting tissues. But you want to make it more atomized than that. You can start out by going piece by piece like that, as with a reflection on the parts of the body. But then say, okay, what are these parts of the body made of? And you chop them up and atomize the whole thing. See how the mind responds. You want to do this when you're in a relatively calm space, so you don't immediately side with the hungers that go after the various images that you use to entertain yourself. And some of them seem very deeply lodged. But if you make your stillness of mind deeper than that, then you can begin to understand Well, the mind tends to entertain itself with these images tends to play with them. And what does it get out of it? It's just, just nothing. It's just these little images that are put together. And John Lee says it's like watching a, a movie. And there are two ways you can watch the movie. Either you can follow the story, and it looks like there really are people up there on the screen, or events up there on the screen, that you can recognize and you can make sense out of it. Or you can decide, I don't need to make sense out of this. I just want to watch this as a exercise in flashes of color. Red, yellow, green. And if the thought was indifferent, well, fine, you just made sure that that hasn't come over to take over your mind. If it's not so indifferent, if there's more of an emotional pull to that particular image, then it's even more important that you learn how to scramble it, because that's how you dig out the mind's ideas about why it needs to protect those things. And you can expose them to the light of your awareness, the light of your alertness. This is one of the ways in which discernment digs down into things and finds the root causes. Once you can see that there's really nothing there in terms of the root cause, nothing that, in other words, nothing you'd really want to follow, that's when you can begin to free yourself from these things.